What's up, everybody? You want to guess what I'm going to talk about? <laughs> Just a quick PSA about wellness, because it's illegal to use the H word around here. And you guys have probably heard this, maybe not, though, so I'm going to pass it along. I've talked before about the two guests that Tucker's had on that were top of their profession, Stanford wellness professionals. And after all of that training, they actually looked step back, looked at the bigger picture and realized, hey, we're just treating symptoms. We're not doing anything to actually help anyone. So what I'm about to tell you comes from them and another guest that Jimmy just had on. And then I've heard quite a few YouTubers mention this, but I don't know who you guys watch. But apparently if you're already not doing your shopping in those center aisles of the grocery store and you're eating actual meat, vegetables, bread, the worst thing that you are doing to yourself is how you're cooking it. And this is something that I overlooked for the longest time, but I'm sticking with my maxim here. If it's a food product and it is less than a hundred years old, you should probably stay away from it. Soy, corn, and they process it and made vegetable oils and they greenwashed it. It's actually seed oils. And these vegetable oils are one of the initial primary drivers, drivers that destroy your health. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, dementia. Every one of those are an epidemic. Every single one of those. And they all are catalyzed by the explosion and the increase of this, this pernicious fat. Now, I've always had a very high metabolism and never had to worry about my weight. So I'm just looking at this from a wellness perspective. You can add Alzheimer's to that list that he was talking about. Basically, every chronic illness out there today, according to the Stanford duo, is due to your diet. And one thing that I have always intuitively known, they told us in school that eggs were bad. And I'm like, no, they're not. That's natural. They tell us that fat is bad. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute, man. Fat is nature's way of storing energy. It doesn't matter what you put into your body. If your body doesn't use it up instantly, then it stores it as fat. So it always seemed ridiculous to me to say that fat was bad. Now, too much of it, of course. I recently showed in a video how the study that was put out saying that cholesterol caused heart dis-ease was completely manipulated once they found a way to lower cholesterol with statins. Well, it turns out for every point your cholesterol drops, then your mortality rate goes up 1%. Cholesterol is literally what you use to make hormones. Basically, now everybody understands that these guidelines that have been put forth in the last 100 years were sponsored by big food. But the latest and greatest that everybody keeps talking about is the seed oils. So I just wanted to let you guys know that you can still just buy straight lard. That's just pig fat. It's right there in the baking aisle, and it's nothing but pig fat. And, you know, you might think that it adds a bacon flavor to everything. No, it doesn't. It It's just fat. <laughs> so I've been cooking with it for a while now, and I like it. One thing that I did always used to notice about vegetable oils is it would give food like this latex kind of taste to it, like a latex glove smells. So I think the lard actually has a better, more natural flavor to it. But let me play you a clip here of something that you're absolutely not going to expect to hear. They're an individual, way less than one in 100, probably less than one in 1,000 people isn't, isn't loaded with this stuff. When you have that preponderance, that fiber that would be normally fuel for the good bacteria actually fuels the bad bacteria, and they make the virulent toxic or more poisonous endotoxin. So it makes you worse. So complex carbohydrates, if you have this preponderance of bad bacteria, make you worse. So eating the fibers uh, uh, and ostensibly healthy vegetables, absolutely counterintuitive, will make you worse. And so do you hear what he just said there? If, if you don't have the right gut bacteria, then vegetables actually produce toxins in your stomach. And evidently, the seed oils have been helping to fuel the bad bacteria instead of the good bacteria. He didn't directly give a solution to that problem, but I would say cut out the seed oils and look into some probiotics. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and try to act like some nutritional expert, but 
Uh, the latest and greatest that I keep hearing over and over is to cut out the seed oils. I haven't noticed any great difference in my life, but for me personally, I've already kind of experimented and found the dishes that seem to give me the best energy levels, and I eat those over and over. I don't think we're supposed to have a widely varied diet like we do today. People used to eat the same thing over and over in season. It was a seasonal diet. During the summer, you're going to have fresh fruits and vegetables. In the fall, then you harvest your grains. You go get a couple deer. The walnuts are falling off the trees, so that's what gets you through the winter. Anyway, cut out the seed oils. Uh, everything tastes fine to me. Cooking with lard. Uh, there's tallow as well, which is beef fat. It's supposed to be a little bit more healthy. But it turns out the seed oils are just another processed food that are leading to all of these chronic problems that used to not be chronic problems 100 years ago. So make what you will of that. Static out.